Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for another session again in your word. Thank you, Lord, for the great revelation you have for us in this book of Joshua. Thank you for gathering your people together so that you can put in fuse, inject something into us that will give us the spirit of the conqueror. Lord, we pray as we come to open the pages of scripture at this time, you reveal your way and your wisdom unto every one of us in Jesus' name. We pray, O oh Lord, that you so help us and put our feet on the right path and make us to think the right thoughts, make us to say the right words, Make us to demonstrate the good action and to do everything according to your wisdom so that in this way that you have given us so as to go and possess the land we will not fail. As we meet the giants on the way, as we meet the anarchies on the way and the people that are opposed to progress, Lord, we pray, will march on, march over every one of them, overcome them in Jesus' name. You have given us a work to do, and we know it shall be done. And everything that stands in the way, your spirit and your power will clear out of the way in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that you give us the heart to feel the sensation that is originating from the very throne of God so that Lord will move on in the energy of the spirit not that of the flesh and then we will accomplish everything you've called us to accomplish in Jesus name be glorified today in our lives. And this year, make it for us a fruitful year. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I need a better amen. amen. You know, if the devil listens to you and then your amen is like the amen of last year. Oh, he says, I can deal with them the way I dealt with them last year. But if your amen is the kind of amen that Satan said, did I ever hear that from deeper life before? Give, now give us an amen that Satan will wonder where are those people coming from? Yeah. Praise the Lord. You can tell I'm just enjoying the new year. You can tell that you know, I have a, a new look and a new approach. Put your hands together for Jesus. Thank you very much. Now we come to an important subject as we come to Joshua chapter 2. Reading from verse 1. And Joshua the son of Nun sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go, view the land, even Jericho. And he went, and he came into an harlot's house, named Rahab, and lodged there. We're looking at a subject that is not very common, not much spoken about. Especially by Pentecostal people. We are Pentecostals. And we depend on God. We lean on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Safe and secure from all alarm. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Yes, we lean on him. And you see, because we lean on the arm of the Lord, many people forget to use their understanding. They forget to use their wisdom. And they forget to use all the abilities they have. 
they throw the common sense away because they say we have the spirit we have the power we have the gifts of the spirit and because we have god on our side they do not make any investigation they do not have any information and they do not make any interrogation they don't ask any question they just say now the lord has given us the land arise and go and they do not understand before between go and getting there there is investigation that is necessary there is a kind of research that has to be done and the spies have to go into the land we need to ask questions get information so that we'll be able to do everything we ought to do wisely and intelligently because many people who are pentecostals they say lean not on your understanding that's the bible it doesn't say don't use your understanding it says don't lean on it get all the information you can get do all the investigation you can make and then get all the facts of the land that you need to get and then don't lean on it but use it don't make it the all in all but don't make it nothing there is a middle line a median between making it all in all and making it nothing you see the mistake that people make is that we don't need to find out anything we don't need to ask any questions we don't need to investigate we don't need to send spies out and make any research go there and come back and give me all the information i need go over this jordan because i've given the land unto you all the same make some research every soul the place of your foot shall tread upon that have i given unto you then study some geography of the land and find out everything you need to find out don't be like the people that just close their eyes and they say god will take us there there's a job to do there are things to find out there's investigation to make there's research to do that's why here we're told joshua the son of Nun, sent out of shitting two men to spy secretly to spy secretly the word secretly once you are saved and once you are sanctified why don't we cancel the word secret secret plan secret investigation a secret research how many of you know that you know some people just think once you become born again everything in your heart you open up and you present it to the king of jericho and i am saved i am sanctified i don't hide anything from anybody see here is all my plan it doesn't work that way secretly how many of you know that you don't reveal all your mind to Pharaoh? You don't reveal all your mind to Nebuchadnezzar secretly. You don't reveal all your mind to the world secretly. In these days of publicity and in these days of the media, you know there are pastors, they have a, they have a plan. Here we are in January. And here we are, and we have a great, great goal. Wouldn't it be wonderful? I call all the media people in our land. Newspaper, radio, television, electronic media. Every one of them, and have a press conference. And then open up all our plans for this year to the media. And let them write, no, secretly. 
There are plans we never tell the media. There are goals we never reveal to the media. There are kind of something we want to do. Our objectives. Our motivation. There are things we don't reveal to the media. There are things we don't just publicly say. Here is what we're doing secretly. Have you ever learned that in your life? And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out of Shittim two men to spy the land secretly, to spy, to find out the information in an indirect way, not in the overt, open way. Make it secret. And then ask questions and find out and investigate. We want to go there. And you know this thing we're talking about has made many people to lose quite a lot of things. Here you are, you're praying for the will of God. And you have discovered the will of God. And you're so happy and joyful. Everybody you meet, you say, do you see something on my face? I'm so happy and I'm so joyful. And I have, I've got something. And the fellow said, what have you got? And then he says, I've discovered the will of God. Who is the will of God? And then you say, you will, you will not know her, but it was her name. And then you mention the name, and after mentioning the name, where does she live? And you're so happy, all the secrets you have, everything that you've got, you lay it out for the other. After all, it's even a Christian. And it's even in the same district with us. And a fellow gets all the information and then he begins to make all the contacts. And there you are saying just hallelujah, praise the Lord, I got the will of God. And then the next time you see that lady, you say, how about courtship? Which courtship? Didn't so say yes? I said yes at that time, but now I say no. You say what? <laughs> Immediately you have headache. And then you discover, you discover, is a person you gave your secret to that went behind and then they did all this maneuvering. And then you find that the fellow said yes to you before. It's now saying, it's now saying yes to the fellow you gave the secret to. Secret. For us to know that we need wisdom in Christianity. And it's not everything you know. As a pastor, everything you plan as an overseer, every project you have as a general superintendent, you'll just come and lay it down before everybody. I'm a sanctified overseer, a sanctified superintendent, and sanctified people don't have any secret we have. Jesus told his own disciples. Peter, James, and John, they were on the mountain. And then they saw his glory as they were coming down. He said, Peter, stop. James, John, stop right there. Don't open your mouth to tell anybody what you saw on the mountain. Don't tell Matthew, not even Andrew. They are disciples. Don't tell them. This is secret. That's Jesus Christ. And so we find as we look at the scripture. And you have to balance up everything. That you know some people even when they are preaching. A preacher, a pastor. Will tell everything about his wife on the pulpit. Everything about his children on the pulpit. And then give all the information to every dick and hurry. But it's not right. And Joshua, the son of Nun, is sent out of Shittim, two men, to spy secretly, saying, Go, view the land, investigate, make some research, and bring reports back to me. Even that Jericho, measure their walls. See how thick they are. See how large the place is. And see their army. 
See how prepared they are. Yes, we know God is going to lead us through. But find out. And find out about their alertness. Whether they are careless people. Or they are kind of energetic people. Whether they were the kinds of people I knew 40 years ago. Or things have changed. Come back and give me information. If I'm going to do battle with them, I need to know about them. Are they small? Are they big? Are they great? Tell me their history. Make some survey. That's why we're looking at this message. Diligent research and planning by champions of faith. Yes, we have faith. Yes, we're champions of faith. Diligent research and planning. Our planning will depend on our research. And the planning, it's difficult to plan with a multitude. It's difficult to gather a large crowd together and plan. The smaller they are, the better. The fewer, the better. The smaller the planning meeting is, the better. You know, there are people that feel, why do we have to limit the planning meeting? Why don't we just get everybody in? Wouldn't it be wonderful for all the people, all of us who are here now, to come to the planning meeting? No, there will be too many. The fewer, the smaller, the better. And when you are planning war, and you are planning how to take over that land, the smaller, the better. Otherwise, it will run into another retreat. Otherwise, it will get into another crusade. But if it's a planning meeting there, you need to make it small. Diligent research and planning by champions of faith in... Proverbs chapter 16. Proverbs 16 verse 20. He that handleth a matter wisely shall find good. And also trusteth in the Lord. A PC. You see the two parts of that sentence there. The one part is to handle a matter wisely. Use your wisdom. Use your mind. Use your training. Use your intelligence. Use your knowledge of geography. Use your knowledge of history. Use your knowledge of people performance. Use your knowledge of, uh, of how people think, how people live, how people act. Use your knowledge of what you know of that community. He that and they all say, matter wisely, we are told there shall find good. At the same time, he trusts in the Lord and is happy. There's no contradiction between using our common sense, using good knowledge, finding out what we need to find out, and at the same time, depending upon the Lord. Here is what Jesus said in Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14, verse 31. Or what king going to battle? What king going to make war against another king? Seated not down first and consulteth. Consultation. Which king going to make war will not sit down first? Here is Jesus telling us this. Here is the Lord Jesus Christ who taught. The greatest lesson and the greatest teaching on faith. At the same time, it says when you're going for battle, when you're going in a war, that you'll sit down first. And you'll consult. Consult as whether he's able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000. That's the reason we investigate. We don't just jump into the field into the battle most much wisdom is hidden in this whole procedure think about this when moses was sending spies out he spent he sent how many 
toil. And when Joshua was sending the spies out, he said, how many? Two. Why? When Moses sent them out, he sent them out to survey the whole nation. When Joshua sent them out, he sent them out to survey only one city, Jericho, obviously. You don't need as many people for the city as you need for the nation, only two. And as you look at that, you'll find a good pattern, Moses and Aaron, only two. Saul and Jonathan, only two. David and Joab, only two. Peter and Andrew, only two. Peter and John, only two. James and John, only two. Saul and Barnabas, only two. Paul and Silas, only two. Timothy and Titus, only two. And then Jesus Christ, when he was sending the, the people out, his own disciples, he sent them two by two. There's wisdom in that. So that when you're making investigation and you're doing some research, you send, you send out people to complement one another. And not people that have any personal, private agenda. You know these two people, their names are not even given to us. Their names are not mentioned. And they didn't feel offended. And they didn't say, why are you hiding our talent? Why are you hiding our ability? Why don't you put us on record? Why is it only your name that must be there? They had no personal agenda, no private agenda. Mention my name, don't mention my name. What does it matter? They sent them out. By the way, how many of you know that when you send spies out... They go to bring secrets to you. And you keep their names secret. But they give the names of the twelve. Yes. Those ones were by themselves in the nation of Israel. And that, that means they were in the wilderness all together by themselves. And because the names were known to the people there, there was no danger. It was just in that congregation. But now, they are at the very edge of the land. And you don't want to publicize their name. You don't want to reveal their identity. There are some jobs, there are some things that need to be done. In the intelligence. That we're not going to reveal your name, your identity. And then sometimes we even see you carrying out the work. And then we pass by as if we didn't know you before. Because of how delicate your work is. That's why Joshua, that's what, why he did what he did. Diligent research and planning by champions of faith. We divide to three parts as we look at this Joshua chapter 2. We're looking at it from verse 1 to verse 7. Joshua chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. Number one, the search for useful information. Search. Search for useful information. Number two. In number two, supervision and unusual illustration. Supervision and unusual illustration. Number three, a series of unrecognized iniquities. A series of unrecognized iniquities. Let's come to number one. The search for useful information. In Joshua chapter 2, once again, verse 1. Joshua chapter 2, verse 1. And Joshua the son of Nun sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land. Even Jericho. Go view the land. Even Jericho. Job chapter 29. In Job chapter 29 verse 16. Job 29 verse 16. I was a father to the poor. And the cause which I knew not, I searched out. 
The cause which I knew not, I searched out. If you want to go to a nation, you have to read about that nation, find out about that nation, all the facts, all the information you can get about that nation, you have to get about them. Where is that nation on the map? Find out. In what part? What's their climate? Find out. What's the main religion? The prevailing religious atmosphere there? Find out. And the people who are there, what's their national language? Find out. Is that national language the language of the common people? Find out. What's the educational level in that nation? So that you will know whether everyone can speak, everyone can understand that thing they call the lingua franca or, or that is, you know, the language of the street of everyone. Find out. That's the research. What's the, uh, what's the attitude of the people there? Do they welcome strangers? Or do they resist and oppose strangers? Find out. When is the best time to do something new there? Find out. What's their political situation? You're going to a nation. And you want to go in there to go and evangelize. What's their political situation? Find out. Are there minds there that anywhere you are going, something can blow up and explode and then you are turned to pieces? Find out. What are the difficult areas in that nation? Find out. And then the religious people there is, uh, which one is predominant there? Is it the Pentecostals or the white garment uh, religious people or the Catholics or the Muslims or the Buddhists? Find out. What's the attitude to technology? What's the attitude to the world, to worldliness, entertainment? Find out. That's the survey. And it is as you find out all these things, then you'll be able to tell. You're going to a new church, even in your own country. And as you're going to, you're saying to that new church, you don't just go there and begin to preach. I have the word, I have the spirit. Are you not going to do some research? What's the background of this church? Yes, I know it's deeper life. What's their background? How many pastors have been there before you came? What sent out the other pastor that was there? Is there a clique there? Is there a gang, a group of people there? Are there some people there that they are the decision makers and they constitute themselves as the people that actually ordain or demote preachers? Find out. It doesn't stop you from going. He didn't stop Joshua from going. He still went, but he found out. Research. And you know, there are people that, you know, even in this marriage we are talking about, once they know the will of God, they don't find out anything. What's your background, my sister? Before you became born again, how many abortions did you commit? Why? We know it's the will of God already. Why do we need to find that out? Have you done any operation that takes away your reproductive system? Why do we need to find out? Are we not Christians? That's what I'm telling you. And then it, when you eventually discover it's too late. I didn't know. She didn't tell me. Did you ask her? I didn't know the family was just a family of, you know, people that were just deep in powers of darkness. Did you find out? Since he got married, he cannot sleep. And they come to press him down on the bed every night. And some personalities come to him and say, why did you marry our wife? Was she married before? Find out. Research. The research that we need to conduct is the search for useful information. Useful information. You know, I'm going for a crusade somewhere. And then I ask a lot of questions. And then I open my eyes to see. And I send some people ahead of me. 
And I say, go in there and see their preparation. And when I get, I begin to filter what's, what's going on in this field. I find out this and this and this. And then that allows me to be able to know where to put my feet and where to put my mouth and where to stretch my leg and where to put my Bible and what to preach unto them. Yes, I'll still preach, but I find out. You'll find out. Research. Searching for useful information in Proverbs chapter 25, verse 2. Proverbs chapter 25. We're looking at verse 2. In Proverbs 25, verse 2, it is the glory of God to conceal a sin. Think about that. It's the glory of God to conceal, to hide a sin. And then it says in that same verse two, but the honor of the kings to search out a matter is the honor. It's the honorable thing to do to search out a matter. Proverbs chapter 20 verse 18. Proverbs chapter 20 verse 18. Every purpose is established by counsel and with good advice make war with good advice how do you have the good advice without the research without searching for the useful information this jericho was a was a gateway into the promised land god's promise god's presence god's power with them or with us is not an excuse or a license for neglect that is to neglect prudence and necessary preparations in performing our duty. We must understand, yes, we are prayerful, but then we are also intelligent. And we find out these two men readily and willingly accepted to go. And then they, when they enter, they had this hazardous kind of enterprise. And I will tell you that Joshua must have known them. You know the leader that doesn't know people? You're not making too much progress. When you need some special people for special assignment, you'll not know the people. You know the leaders that just stay on their ivory tower and they don't mix with the people. The higher they go, the more secluded they become. The higher you go, the cooler you become. And you're just isolated there. And you have an office and the office is first around. And people cannot see you. And you cannot come out to see the people. You don't mix with the people. When you need people to do this delicate kind of job, you'll not find. The people you will choose are the people... Somebody may be good on the pulpit, but he's not good to be a spy. Somebody may be good in evangelism. Everybody he meets, are you born again? The, a spy cannot do that. Already he reveals himself that somebody is good in evangelism, is good in prayer, is good in casting out devils, will not be good in being a spy. And if you don't know people to people, you don't know A from B. You don't know the difference between people. The people you know are the people that are fiery in preaching. And the people that are in the limelight, you'll not be able, when you have this delicate job, special work, sensitive work to do, you will not know which one you are going to choose. But Joshua knew the people. And those two people, he also knew that they can complement one another. He knew that they can support one another. You know, if you're going to bring two people together, they must, they will not be people that are, you know, that their gifts cannot complement. That their gifts cannot go together. Their gifts cannot work together. You will not bring people that are too personality conscious. 
I'm conscious of my personality. He is conscious of his personality. I want to exalt my gift. He wants to exalt his gift. And you bring two of us together. He'll be working for himself. I'll be working for myself. He'll be fighting for his own goal. I'll be struggling for my own goal. Will not compliment. There'll be too much argument and heat on the field. People that compliment one another. And he sent them out. I pray God will give us wisdom. Point number two. Supervision. An unusual illustration. In Joshua chapter two. Joshua chapter two. Supervision. And this is an unusual illustration. Joshua chapter two. I'm reading from verse two. And it was told the king of Jericho. And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men hither tonight of the children of Israel to search out the country. Stop there for a moment. Two people entering into a city and immediately the people knew. And the people immediately got to the king and they gave the information to him. Two people have come. They are from Israel. They came to spy out the land. Here we are. In this congress, look around. This is not up to a city. Can we spot out if two people entered into this camp? Do we have proper security? Do we put the security gadgets in place? In this day of technology, where you can just see it in one place and see everything that goes on in the whole camp, can we detect if two people were to come in? Or is this camp porous? Is that gate there? Is it manned? Do we have any door there? Is the door ever there closed or locked? And do we have people there that stay? And they can tell us, if only two people, if they enter, and they can tell us where they are coming from, and they can tell us their purpose. Are we that security conscious? They were. How we need to learn from them. They had something to protect. They were protecting their land. They were protecting their city. They were protecting their walls. Unfortunately for them, God had given that land to Israel. But he didn't know. And he said, we are protecting our land. Do you have anything to protect? Does this church, the headquarters church here, do we have anything to protect the doctrine, the gadgets, the instruments we have, the building we have, the lives of the people who are here? Do we have anything to protect all that were bought with millions of us, billions of naira all over these years? Do we have anything to protect Jericho and something to protect? This is leadership congress. And we need to understand it's not just, you know, I'm born again. Yes, thank God we're born again. Thank God we're sanctified. How about protecting our property? How about protecting our children? And when some people get into the camp, into the children's section, do we know who they are? When they get into the youth section, do we know who they are? And when they come into a meet and they want to join a special section of the work, and then later they begin, when they begin to do their work, and you know, this fellow is dead, and that other fellow is dead, and eventually one will begin to fast and pray, somebody begins to confess that he was a witch, he was sent there to the children's section, now he killed this, he killed that. Must we wait for such a long time? Before we have information. But you see the king of Jericho. Immediately they went to him. The king of Jericho was accessible. Available. If the king of Jericho was you know. Just in the isolated tower. In the isolated kind of throne. They would not be able to get to him. 
And if the overseer is not approachable, is not available, is not accessible, we can't reach him. We have a delicate information to give to our overseer, we can't reach him. We cannot even text him on his phone. Nobody knows his number. And we cannot send an email to him. Nobody knows his email number. We cannot get to his house. He says, my house is my private personal territory. Don't ever come. You want to tell me anything? Tell me in church. It will be too late at that time. Give us chance to get to you. We'll help you to protect this great church. That the Lord has made you an overseer of. That king was available. Be available. So we can give you the information you need. You know, this king must have been friendly with the citizens, with the subjects. You know, if you are not, if you are not friendly and open and nice to your people, they won't get to you. They say... I would have gone to the pastor to tell him this. But he's grinding something with me. He's fighting with me. And because of that, I cannot get to him. The way he makes his face is like, what are you coming for? Troublemaker, you want to come and trouble me again so I cannot get and I have this information. And I cannot get to him. Be available. And this is the usual lesson we're learning from this king. And you women, wives of pastors, be available. You know your wives. If you are available, and we members of the church, if we have something against your husband, if you are available, we'll come and say, sister. See the way the pastor is doing this. Please, talk to our pastor so that he can ease up his method. And if your wife will talk to your husband, our members will not need to write to the headquarters. Our members will not need to write to the GS. You'll settle it over there. Your wife will talk to you. My husband... You don't know. I have information. The people feel oppressed. The people feel that you are not feeding them. The people, they feel that if you push them to the wall, they might ride to the headquarters. Is that so? Yes. Who told you? It's not who told me. It's looking for a scapegoat. Don't tell your husband who told you. Don't get other members of the church into trouble. Just say, my husband, this is what I know. Correct it. So that they will not have to write to the headquarters. You know, if you are that open, you'll be able to do your work. And this new year, nobody will unseat you. You will enjoy your ministry. Just a little bit of wisdom. Just a little bit of being open. Just a little bit of being available. And then they told the king. There came men in hither tonight of the children of Israel to search out the country. When he says the country is just that land. You know, when they say country club, you know, it's just sometimes in the GRA there sometimes. And then in verse 3. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab. Prompt action. Prompt action. You know, some of us leaders, what if they give me information? And then I say, we'll think about it. We'll look into that. And we don't act promptly. But you know, we're learning a lesson from this king. Immediately, he got the information. There are spies. The security of our land is in jeopardy. And therefore, he, he rose into action swiftly. Immediately, he sent unto Rahab. How did he know that it was to Rahab's house they had gone? He made his own investigation. 
how intelligent we ought to be in this work the Lord has committed into our hands. How sharp, how wise we have to be having the eyes of an eagle that will know everything that is going around and then will be able to tell that is where to fish out the trouble and then we'll be able to tell this is where those spies are and we'll be able to deal with that thing immediately he said to rahab saying bring forth the men do you see that language it's not are there some men there no he believed the people that reported to him there must be that believing one another having confidence and trust in one another if you're going to work but you know if you're at loggerheads and enmity with the people that can give you the information and you never believe anybody it's not going to work bring out the men bring forth the men that are come to thee which are entered into thine house for they become to search out all the country an unusual illustration of supervision supervision and then we should have that kind of attitude supervision proverbs chapter 27 proverbs chapter 27 verse 23 be, di be thou diligent to know the stage of thy flocks and look well to their to thy heart be diligent to know the stage of thy flocks know the stage know the situation know their condition and then we're told in first thessalonians chapter 3 first thessalonians chapter 3 from verse 5 chapter 3 Verse 5, for this cause, when I could no longer forbear, I sent to know your faith. I didn't take for granted. I sent to know your faith, lest by some means the tempter have tempted you and our labor be in vain. Survey, search, find out investigate get information i said he didn't go himself a leader cannot do everything by himself but the people are the eyes of the leader and what they see they come to tell him so that he'll be able to do his work appropriately and so paul the apostle said i said to know and then was the result. Here is here we are in verse 6. And now when Timotheus came from you unto us and brought us good tidings of your faith and charity, and that ye have good remembrance of us, always desiring greatly to see us, as we also to see you, therefore, brethren, who are comforted over you in all our affliction and distress by your faith. For now we live if ye stand fast in the Lord. The report brought comfort. Philippians chapter 2 verse 19. Investigate. Find out. In Philippians chapter 2. Reading from verse 19. Philippians 2. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timotheus shortly unto you, that I also may be of good comfort when I know your stage. I want you to know, and then that will give me great comfort. God will give us wisdom. Amen. Point number three. A series of unrecognized iniquities. A series of unrecognized iniquities. We're looking at Joshua chapter 2. Joshua chapter 2 in verse 4 and the woman took the two men and hid them and, and said thus 
there came men in unto me, but I wist not whence they were. What's that? I said, what's that? That's a lie. The first question is this. Wasn't that a good lie? No. That's not a good lie. There's never a good sin. There's never a good evil. There's never a good iniquity. There's never a good unrighteousness. It was a lie. But Rahab did not have a Bible to read. Rahab did not know any of the Ten Commandments. Rahab never attended Sunday Scripture or Sunday School. Rahab did not have any sin that we have. The doctrine, the teaching. Rahab was not born again at that time. Rahab did not know the moral law, the moral standard of God. Rahab did not know about hell fire. Rahab did not know anything about heaven. Rahab did not know without holiness no man shall see the Lord. She was just a pagan. She was a heathen. She was a sinner. She was just a harlot. And when the king came and said, Bring forth those men. Those two men, they came to spy out the land. He said, which men? Those two men that came, oh yes, they came. But they have gone. And she hid them on the top there. And covered them up with the flags. And then told a lie. Suppose she didn't tell a lie. Wouldn't those two spies die? No. You think it was a lie that protected them? Do you remember in 1 Kings chapter 13 verse 4? 1 Kings chapter 13 verse 4. When the man of God came from Bethlehem, Judah. And then the king said, take him. His hand dried up. We didn't need to tell him any lie there. Their hands will dry up if they try to catch you. Amen. Number two. Don't you remember Isaiah chapter 37 verse 36? The Assyrians came. And they wanted to destroy the children of Israel. God sent one angel. And the one single angel destroyed 185 soldiers of the Assyrians. We don't need to tell any lie. That same God that protected all those children of Israel is still the God on the throne. Number three. Do you remember Genesis chapter 19? Verse 11 to verse 14. When those two angels were in Lot's house and the Sodomites came and they said, bring out the men and we want to know them. They wanted to commit the sin of Sodomy with them. And then they said, we'll deal with this man. And the angels blindfolded them. God could have sent angels to blindfold all those people in Jericho and they'll not see those two spies. He has many methods of protecting his own. You don't have to tell a lie. Are you going to be like are you going to be like Rahab after reading the Bible from Genesis Revelation? Are you going to be like a pagan, a pagan harlot? After you have attended so many retreats and so many congresses? Are you, are you going to protect yourself with a lie? Just like Rahab, and then Rahab will be your teacher. Telling you how to lie. And Rahab had never read any of the promises of God. And did not know any of the commandments of the Bible. Not only that, you remember number four. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. God protected them in the fire. And even if the king of Jericho was to do anything, God can still protect. Numbers, number five. Do you remember Daniel in the lion's den? We don't have to tell a lie. Daniel, did you know that there was an edict 
If anybody prays to any God, all these 30 days he'll be thrown into the lion's den. Yes, I know. Did you pray? You didn't have to tell a lie. You didn't have to tell a lie. They picked him up. And then they threw him into the lion's den. Rahab did not know that. Rahab did not know the Bible. And therefore she thought, all I can do is to tell a lie. You don't have to. Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. And then the king came the following morning. Daniel, it's your God whom you serve. Able to deliver you out of the mouth of the lions. O king, live forever. I'm still alive. The Lord has sent his angels. And he has closed the mouth of the lions. So they don't hurt me. In as much, I've not done any hurt before you. Neither am I, have I done any evil in his sight. Then was the king glad and happy. And he said, Daniel, servant of the living God, come out. And he came out. God can protect you. We don't have to tell any lie. Peter, what did we tell you? That you must not mention this name again. Number six. And then you have done this. And they took him. And they put him in the prison. And he just slept. You don't have to tell him. I just go to sleep. And then in the night an angel came from heaven and touched him. Rise up. And he rose up. And when they were going, they saw the iron gate. And he opened to them of its own accord. And then it came to the outer gate. It came to them of its own accord. And then he went out. He was delivered. You don't have to tell a lie. Number seven. Herod. He came out. And he made a great oration. This is the enemy of the church. And this is the one that laid hands on, on James. He said, but James died. Yes. Don't you know why? Make it that one of us will be on this side. And then the other one will be on this side. James and John. You don't know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I will drink? And James and John said, yes. And Jesus said, you will drink. You will drink that cup. But still, I'll not give you this place or that place. Place seeking is not, should not be among the people of God. That's why he said he will drink the cup. He drank it. But when Peter was taking that same chapter 12, he just went to sleep. We don't have to tell a lie. At this stage, being a preacher, are we going to be like Rahab? At this level, said, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Are we going to live the lifestyle of Rahab? A pagan, a liar, a harlot that didn't know any of the commandments of the Lord. Are we going to follow the example of Rahab? Is Rahab your example? Or Christ the Lord is Christ. And then that herald. In uh, Acts of the Apostles chapter 12 verses 20 to 23. He made that great oration. And then because he didn't give the glory to God. The angel came and smote him and he died. And that same God is still alive today. This is going to be a year of honesty. This is going to be a year of truth. A year of truthfulness. No lies in our mouths anymore. You know how dangerous it is? You know these lies that people tell? How dangerous are the lives of many other people? Let me show you just a few examples. In, in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 21. First Samuel chapter 21. Here we are. In 1 Samuel chapter 21. I'm reading from verse 1. Then came David to Nob, to Ahimelech. The priest. And Ahimelech was afraid at the meeting of David and said unto him, Why art thou alone and no man was thee? Verse 2. And David said unto him, Ahimelech the priest, The king has commanded me a business. This is the lie. 
The king has commanded me a business. He was running away from Saul. And he came to Ahimelech. And Ahimelech said, Why are you here like this? And he said, The king commanded me a business. And I said unto me, Let no man know anything of the business whereabout I send thee. And watch, I have commanded thee. And I have appointed my servant to such and such a place. And eventually asked for a sword. In verse 8. And David said unto Ahimelech, Is there not here under thine hand a spear or sword? For I have neither, I have neither brought my sword, nor my weapons with me, because the king's business required haste. That was a lie. The king's business required haste. You know, sometimes uh, we preachers, uh, we have to be truthful to the scripture. Sometimes when you're trying to motivate people and you're looking for some verses, you open this and then you tell the people, we're going to serve the Lord, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And the king's business requires haste. Why don't you look for all the passages? Why do you come to a passage like that where, where David was just, you know, giving up his faith, was acting in fear, and, he was, and his fear led him to telling a lie. The king's business required haste. And the priest said, The sword of Goliath, the Philistine, whom thou slewest in the valley of Elah, behold, it is here, wrapped in a cloth behind the effort. If thou wilt take that, take it. For there is no other save that here. And David said, there is none like that. Give it me. That's, now, that's the conclusion of the lie he told. And that's what he got for the lie he told. Let's see the result. Chapter 22, verse 17. And the king, this is Saul said unto the footmen that stood about him, turn and slay the priests of the Lord, because their hand also is with David. And because they knew when he fled, and did not show it to me, but the servants of the king would not put forth their hand to fall upon the priests of the Lord. And the king said unto Doeg, and this was the Doeg that actually revealed to Saul that something happened. I saw David. He came to Ahimelech. There's a lie he told. And this is what Ahimelech gave him. And Saul said, what? And then went to the priest and said, see what you have done. And the fellow said, I didn't know. The lie was told in such a way it was believable. How could I have known? And so the king said, kill all of them. Turn thou and fall upon the priest. Doing the Edomite turned and he fell upon the priest and slew on that day four score and five that were in linen effort. Eighty-five men of God died because of the lie of David. David, do you really need that sword? David, do you need to tell that lie? This is a lie that is not necessary. A lie that claimed 85 souls and they died just like that. Do we need any lie to protect ourselves? Didn't the almighty God say, I will be with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And all my needs are supplied by the Lord. Do I need to tell a lie? To get any sin from anybody at any time? No. He supplies our needs. Is the Lord our shepherd. Do we need a lie? David, you have been anointed to go. And to then get to the throne. Do you need a lie? To protect yourself. This is unnecessary. 
And this lie had caused 85 people, innocent people, to die. In Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 16. Proverbs 6, verse 16. These six things does the Lord hate. Yea, seven, an abomination unto him, a proud look, a lying tongue. That's abomination to the Lord. A lying tongue, abomination to the Lord. A lying tongue, abomination to the Lord. Do you tell lies to your wife? Maybe you do. I have to tell her the lie. Because if I told her the truth, she has high blood pressure. And if I told her the truth, she will die. No. Truth does not kill. Ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. Do you tell lies to your husband? Yes. Because if I tell him the truth, he will kick me out. No. God is on the side of those who tell the truth. Do you tell tr uh, lies to your landlord once in a while? When he's demanding his money. And I don't have the money to give him. And if I told him the truth, he will eject me. No. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Tell the righteous, it shall be well with the righteous. It shall be fed. And the Lord will keep you safe in the land. It's the Lord that will preserve the accommodation. It's not the lie. Do you tell lies to your employers? I'm going for the Congress. If I told them the truth, they will not allow me to go. No. Tell the truth. I want to go to the Congress. I'm one of the leaders in the church. You know me. I'm a preacher in our church. And we have this Congress once in a year. And I must be there. Will they allow me if I tell the truth? Yes. They'll say go and then pray for us over there. Tell the truth. You don't have to tell a lie. Do you tell lies in your market? You're selling spare parts? Yes. Ah. Why do you have to do that? Because if I told them the truth, they'll not pay the amount I'm charging. How do you know? It's a lot that will send the customers. Now, this is the amount I'm going to sell it. It's too high. It's high like that because this is genuine. This is not Taiwan. This one is original. It's high. Yes, I have to put something on it to pay for this shop. I have to put something on it so that I have to use the money to travel and to go and buy all these things that you see here. That's why my price is like that. And the Lord will touch their hearts. They'll say, this man is telling me the truth. I'm going to buy from you. They'll buy. We don't have to tell the lie. And then you want to get married to somebody. And then you have all this great and big revelation and vision and dream. I saw you in the dream. I didn't know your name before. Can you believe this? Almighty God, give me your name. Are you Miriam Olumide? <laughs> How did you know my name? I got it directly from God. We don't have to tell a lie. My sister, the Lord has been just putting your love in my heart. and I'm just attracted to you. I don't have any dream. I don't have any revelation. I don't know your name, but I just love you. Go and pray. If it's the will of God for you to marry me. If it's the will of God, it will come through. What do we have to tell lies? All these lies that people tell and they lose their souls. Six things does the Lord hate. Here we're told, yea, seven, abomination unto him. 
a proud look, a lying tongue. That's abomination to the Lord. And then it says, hands that shed innocent blood. And hearts that devises wicked imaginations. Feet that be sweet to, to share in running to mischief. A false witness that speaketh lies. And he that sweats discord among the brethren. Lies, God hates it. Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21. We're looking at verse 8. Revelation chapter 21. Verse 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and all mongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars. How many liars? All liars. Shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. This is the second death. Revelation chapter 22. Revelation 22. Reading from verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments. That they may have right to the tree of life. And may enter in through the gates into the city. For without outside are the dogs and the sorcerers and the mongers and the murderers and the idolaters. And whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Correct all the lies you have told. Repent before the Lord. The Lord will protect you. And the Lord will preserve you. And the goodness of the Lord will be upon your life in Jesus name. This year you will succeed. Of the truth in your mouth. With honesty in your life. And with righteousness and purity. And going the way of the Lord. What the Lord has called us to do. You will succeed in Jesus name. Make it a new year. A year of honesty. A year of truthfulness. A year of faithfulness. A year of just depending upon the Lord. And not thinking that you have to do anything like Rahab. Before you can get through. Because this year there's a breakthrough for everyone. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. That the Lord will help us this year. The Lord will help us this year. And we will do what he has called us to do and will be what the Lord has called us to be. A, a, a life of holiness, a life of righteousness, a life of honesty, a life of dependence upon the Lord. A life that is confident in the Lord. The Lord will help you. Talk to the Lord in prayer. A year of transparency. A year of honesty. A year of truthfulness. A year of faithfulness. A year when we know the truth and tell the truth. A year when there's no fear of man. A year of depending upon the God of miracles, the God of signs and wonders. How about the lies you told in the past? Won't you do something about that? Justifying lies. Won't you do something about it? Acting out lies. Abomination before the Lord. Won't you do something about it? A life of dishonesty. Won't you do something about it? So that your conscience can be clear. And this burden. Load. Of a life of dishonesty. Will not weigh you down anymore. And then you hand over your case to the hand of the Lord. And allow the Lord to care for you. He cares. Yes, he cares. Truthfulness. It's necessary. If we're going to experience that care of the Lord. Yes, you'll trust the Lord. But you'll make use of all the information you have. And then supervise. Didn't you learn that from the king of Jericho? Supervise. Don't allow, don't just expose the church to every deacon Harry, to every spy. And don't give all the, all the information to the people around, to all the villagers around, to everybody in the community. We should have some kind of information in the church 
that is not open to everybody classified information we should be able to have so the secrets of the church the secrets of the ministry and the events happening here will not be made available to every dick and harry outside in the surrounding community otherwise you'll make the outside world to know the soft spots and the weaknesses of the local assembly that's dangerous then you will sell the church into the hands of outside people that is dangerous don't be flippant in talking watch set a watch over your mouth saved sanctified yet wise in jesus name we pray Heavenly Father, we thank you because of the revelation you have given us in your word today. We're asking, O oh Lord, that this revelation will make us better in the service of the Lord in Jesus' name. We're praying, O oh Lord, more than ever before, make every one of us truthful, honest, faithful, trustworthy, dependable in Jesus' name. That our lives will be plain, honest, clear, sanctified pure that lord every shade and every form of lie you wipe away from our lives in jesus name that there'll be truthfulness between husband and wife truthfulness between parents and children truthfulness between members and members of the church and truthfulness between the church and the leadership of the church we we'll pray lord this year will be a year of honesty a year of transparency a year of truthfulness a year of obedience and faithfulness to your word a year of intelligent action and a year of breakthrough for every one of us in jesus name and we pray lord like you protected those two spies even without rehab you could still you will still have protected them because you had given them the land like you protected them, you'll protect every one of us and the whole church this year in Jesus' name. Amen. I will pray that we will be carriers and proclaimers and preachers of this truth in Jesus' name. Amen. We know that it will not work if we're preaching the truth and then we're living online. Therefore, Lord, we pray what we preach or live out. Amen. Do it for us, Lord get us a higher level of christian behavior this new year in jesus name we thank you because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray